So, this vlog's gonna be a little bit different. Welcome back to my channel. If I haven't met you, my name's Sianna. You can call me SJ. Someone suggested that I make dinner and do like a talk to camera whilst I'm making dinner. And I thought that was genius. So if that was you, give yourself a pat on the back. That's what I'm gonna be speaking on tonight. I also don't know what I'm gonna be cooking. I haven't like gone to the shops and gotten anything specifically for this. This is gonna be a really just like throw together shit that we already have in the kitchen kind of meal, which let's be honest, is most meals. <laughs> so let's, um, I'm gonna look in the fridge and the pantry and see what we got. So this is currently what we have in the fridge. This is most of our stuff, but some of it is the owners of the house like left a whole bunch of their own kind of stuff here. I'm thinking maybe using the pesto up here. We got some dairy-free pesto and a whole bunch of vegan cheese. We got like the slices of it here as well as like shredded. And then we've got some gluten-free vegan lasagna sheets. So I'm thinking of using those. And then like leftovers and some beans and whatnot and zucchini and just making some kind of a vegan lasagna which I've only ever done once before, by the way, so this could be horrible, but let's give it a go. Ah, every time. She me every time. All right, someone asked, any tips for finding a man? Tinder slash dating apps are not it. Um, I couldn't agree more <laughs> with whoever wrote that. I, um, yeah, I am not a fan of Tinder and dating apps myself due to just you know my personal experience with them however of course there's exceptions to that rule right um i just yeah like i'm i'm really grateful but also don't want to be like pretentious about it or righteous about it that i didn't meet my partner on a dating app like i just as well could have and it wouldn't take away from the story at all i just think it minimizes or limits um the type of partner that you could potentially find. So I think on dating apps, obviously because they're mostly, not all, but mostly at least intentionally or initially, they're intentionally appearance based, right? Like it's portraying your best selves, all the different versions of you that you wanna portray in like the five photos or whatever, and you try to be funny and show your sense of humor. When in reality, it's like we should or this is at least my personal opinion on dating. I, again, I'm not certified to share any of this. I don't have any information other than my personal experience. Um, so this is just that. This is just word vomit from my brain to yours. Of, yeah, I think it limits the, the kind of, I don't know, likelihood that you're going to find someone who's there with the same intention as you and who isn't masking. But within that, there's obviously exceptions to the rule. For example, if you were on it, are you masking? Are you there for the right intentions? Maybe, probably. This is, hold on, burning. This was not the best idea. It's burning. I'm gonna leave that open. It'll probably invite all the bugs in. But this is why I don't film when I cook, guys. I just burnt onion and garlic in like 30 seconds. Ah! What do I do? And then, uh, hope that goes out. Yeah, I'm not the best at multitasking. This is what I'm learning from this little endeavor. I mean, when it comes down to it, if you want to use a dating app, use a dating app. If you don't want to use a dating app, don't use a dating app. Yeah, I found my experience was that I preferred not to be on a dating app purely because I had this weird, thought in my head that I didn't want that to be how I met my partner. And that says more about me than it does about you or about anyone who chooses to be on the app. So that's something that I needed to sit with and, and figure out. Um, yeah, like I have nothing against if that's how other people met. I just find that interesting to feel like if that were how to be how I'd met my partner, I would have had a little bit of shame about that. And that's just something curious for me to sit with, really. What are you the most proud of in yourself? 
That's a really beautiful question. I would say I am most proud of, it's a really beautiful question. Um, possibly, probably my resilience, my ability to learn and to admit that I'm wrong, which happens frequently, very frequently. Ask my partner. He just got home, I can hear him. Um, yeah, probably, probably that. Okay, so we got the mushrooms, tomato, baby spinach, and a whole bunch of the vegetable protein, which you just has to have to add water to, and then I'm gonna add spices. I'm just gonna chuck this in and then put it back on to cook once the water's in there. And then hopefully it doesn't burn again, because whoops the daisies. And the leftovers as well, because why not? Multi-purpose, right? And quinoa, extra protein. Um, that and I'm trying to <laughs> record a Q&A YouTube video whilst cooking and I'm just not the best at multitasking yet. But we'll figure it out. Very much so. Within 30 seconds I burnt it and I was like, what the hell? Schnoice. So this will end up kind of looking like me, like the vegetable protein will just continue absorbing the water. If you've never cooked with it, that's kind of exactly what it does. Not that exciting. And then I'm just adding a bit of adobo seasoning. I don't know what this is, but I love it. This like fully doesn't tell me how to cook lasagna pasta. I don't know if that's meant to be common knowledge, but it's not. I've only done this once before. But I'm pretty sure, I think this is a little dish. Can you never have too big with pasta? You never know. Yeah, two layers. Okay, that seems a bit better. Or should I go this way? That way. That way for sure. All right. We got four across. Perfect. And then I think we just layer shit, right? I think this might do the job. Let's see. Oh, maybe not. Kind of? No. Maybe? No. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, next question. Would you be interested in having a yoga teacher training? Absolutely. I would love to do that one day. I don't yet feel like I'm at or in the right space mentally, career wise, anything to be able to do that at the moment. But it is definitely something that I have considered doing. I feel like there's too many options um, for what I want to do next or the right order to do them in. But it's definitely in the back of my mind. I am absolutely going to lose a finger like this. Like, and I can laugh about it now, but I will not be laughing in like 30 minutes. Tools that help you when you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, or down. That one, I would say, is a very personal question. Um, and it's not necessarily something that you should be asking me, but maybe something that you should be asking yourself. And what makes you feel better when you're feeling down or you're feeling anxious? Is it a couple of deep breaths? Is it closing down the eyes and finding a meditation? Is it getting outside in nature? Is it shaking your body, like releasing the energy, just like shaking? Is it cooking? What like brings you joy? What makes you feel good? Is it creating, making art, connecting one-on-one -on -one with humans? Um, journaling is a really good way to like get things just out of your system. Or one of my personal favorites, going to the ocean, going underwater and screaming, screaming. So good. I don't remember how to do this, do you? I'm pretty sure it's just like, well, that looks pretty good. Dope. Wait, the coloring looks horrible, but it looks good. It smells good. Uh, it, was, it said, are you and your partner trying for a baby? How did you overcome fear? What's your response to that? My partner is a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, me. <laughs> I think I'm in love with my childhood best friend. What did I do? Is that all that's it? Yeah. Tell them. What's the worst that can happen? They say that they love you too, but not the same way. That's beautiful. All right, layer of cheese. 
What do you think the purpose of life is? What do I think the purpose of life is? To live, to learn, to connect, and to make mistakes. Love company. I don't know if we have a purpose. I think my more supposed to just like be. Ooh, okay. Spouse time. What's most challenging in social media? Um, a mix between the demand to understand and constantly create the right amount of content that will be received well by an algorithm that no one understands and or never asking for a sense of responsibility or entitlement that's given to you. People just assume that you know the answers to things and have the right to speak on things and I don't. So there's like a separation. People like put you on a pedestal and it gives you imposter syndrome because you have no right to be there. Do you ever eat snacks? I love snacks. <laughs> Is that a question? Yeah. I love snacks. No, do not. I ever eat snacks, Bear? It says, do you ever eat Do snacks? I ever not eat snacks? Kevin wants to know if you have a twin. Do I have a twin? I wish, that'd be fun. Imagine that if I did have a twin and you didn't know and I'd just been like pulling in and out my twin this entire time. So like, I'm actually a total bitch and just the times that I've been a bitch of me and the rest of the time is my twin. She's lovely. She's an angel. Oh, damn. I think it'd be so fun to have a twin. Do you live in Australia? Do you travel often? Do you count your calories? Are you conscious of calories and macros? How often do you eat throughout the day? How often do you work out? How much do you earn roughly earn in a bracket on ID? What's your full time job? What are some of your healthy habits? That is a lot of questions. Yeah, I would. But I can ask them. I live in Australia. I'm based in Australia. I don't really technically live anywhere currently right now. We're just renting here and then we're traveling again for a few months and then I'm hoping to be back here. Might end up elsewhere. We never really know. Um, healthy habit, what was the other thing? I don't know, I've moved on. Uh. What's with Nadia today? Oh yeah, about what? About seeing her in Switzerland. Ooh, for when? For birthday. For your birthday? Yeah. Is she open? She came? She says it's non-negotiable, we have to come. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love Nadia. Alright, there's a lot of body image ones, so what's your advice for food struggles and body image? That's a good one. Um, I think just understand that it's an individual journey and that progress isn't always linear and that that's something that pretty much everyone, especially women, deal with. And so like take the advice that you would give other people and like let it absorb in to yourself. And something that I think helps me sometimes, I don't even know if I've spoken to you about this, is um, like imagining my younger self. And like I imagine myself as a five year old for some reason. That's just, and I'm not gonna judge that or criticize it or doubt it. That's just what comes to mind. And I just try to treat her nicely and kindly. And then realize how different my actions are if they are different to the way that I would treat her and then reassess. Actually also, I would say a big thing for body image is movement, at least for me, because movement takes me to a space where I remember that it doesn't matter what it looks like or what you look like, it's how good it makes you feel. And so I think redefining or changing the relationship with movement and working out um, then makes you more health conscious or wellness aware and makes you want to do better for the right reasons rather than for body image that could just be my experience but it's definitely my experience well i should probably preheat the oven any retreats in europe yes Shameless self-plug, right? Um, Bear and I are hosting a retreat in Greece this year in July. July 22nd until 27th. Is that right, baby? Yeah. yeah. 
Um, it's going to be on Kufanesia Island. It's beautiful. I've taught a retreat there before, like at the place that we're going. It's tiny. It's a tiny, quaint island. It's so cute and beautiful and um, yeah, like the perfect little container for a retreat and to connect with people in the most profound and beautiful ways. Um, in my experience, and Bear can speak for it on himself on his own, but um, yeah, retreats really are just the most amazing spaces because everyone who en who comes to a retreat and enters into it comes to it with the same or a similar intention of being really vulnerable, being present, being open, wanting to heal, and to create like-minded connections, um, yeah, or deep connections with other souls so yeah they're just profound aren't they like there's nothing quite like them mm, that is yummy I don't go I hope this is yummy what's your favorite book Ooh, I love the prophet I love existential kink those are the two that come to mind right now, though, so I'll stick with those. What are the best ways you found to move on from a relationship or love? Allow yourself to just, like, feel really unapologetically and know that it's not supposed to look or feel a certain way and that when you feel like you've, you're starting to heal, you're going to have setbacks, but just giving yourself that time. I don't know. I, like, love that time. Someone recently, a girlfriend recently told me that she'd been through a breakup or was going through a breakup. And I, a part of me was kind of like envious, which well, is, is, yeah, well, just because, right, no, it's just such a, a powerful transitional phase and period. It's a powerful time to level up. Enjoy it. Tips for finding a man. Don't. <laughs> and I don't mean don't find a man, I just mean don't look for one, if you can. Because if you look for one, and this could be, I mean I wouldn't say this if I was single, I know what it's like to, you know, get caught up in thinking that you're going to be alone forever, but if that's the case, <laughs> maybe you are better off alone. <laughs> Until or unless you can find someone who really does add more to your life than they take away from it. Um, and someone that you don't need, but it's amazing to have them around. I would rather be in no relationship than be in a half assed relationship or in a relationship with someone who didn't have the same intentions or the right intention in general. Oh. Okay. Just pasta going everywhere. What would be the top five things you'd advise your younger self? I always respond this way initially to this question or questions like it. And it's that I wouldn't say anything. In... Maybe in general, maybe I wouldn't say anything at all, but I definitely would just hug my younger self first. Um, that's my love language. So I think she just feels safe to just know that we're okay in the future and that's exactly what a hug would resemble or mean, signify to her. I would say the things you're most afraid of are the things you most need. Trust the process and know that you'll never know everything. Also know that you'll never please everyone, so don't try. Be more selfish, I think I would say. And just learn to set boundaries, like right now, <laughs> as a young kid. Just learn to be like, that feels good, that doesn't feel good, please don't put me in that situation or no I don't want to do that rather than trying to people please my way out of situations how many hours do you sh shit during the day? do I shit? yeah that is not a question <laughs> show me <laughs> how many hours do you sit? it's a sit bear <laughs> this guy um, I don't know how many hours I sit during a day sometimes a lot sometimes not much most of the time a lot. <laughs> Most of the time I'm sitting from my laptop. In the oven we go. Woo. I love the cheese. Oh my God. <laughs> the 
God you're here. I'm telling you with that one, cheese is just... Pasta. Pasta sheets. Travesty. I'm so sorry. I did not mean to offend you, sir. Okay, now, now we go back in here. All right. What did you want to be when you were younger? I think this is the first time I've ever admitted this, at least publicly. Stripper. No, well, kind of. I mean, when I was really little, my mom hosted daycare at our house because both the boys were in daycare. And so I was like the littlest, but I was still allowed to join. And they were apparently all going around in a circle and saying what they wanted to be when they grew up. And you know, people, like the little boys were like firefighters or astronauts. And the girls were like, a princess or a nurse and then she got to me and I said that I wanted to be one of the girls that jumped out of birthday cakes which is a stripper um, but when I was like a teenager when I first started being curious about things I wanted to be a Victoria's Secret model are there any different life slash career paths that you're cons that you've considered or are considering pretty much every single one ever um, yeah, that's like a very open-ended question and I don't really know where to begin. Tips for waking up early. I actually think I'm good at answering that one. Um, I got this, ready? Here. I'm up every day before I ask you. I don't think you've ever been up before me. We have this unspoken well, rule. He always sleeps in. And he takes it way too seriously. I think I said it as a joke and he's just done it ever since so I'm not gonna complain. Where last person out of bed has to make the bed. Which makes sense, right? No. Like, yeah, it makes total sense. No, no. And then I think I've made it once. You knew that you woke up earlier. No, I'm just a morning person and you're not as morning person. That's okay, Barry, you don't have to be a morning person. I would say, firstly, is putting your phone away from the bed. One, because of, you know, radiation and stuff by your head. Probably not the best idea. But more so because you have to get out of bed and like out of, not just out of bed, but like out of the room to go turn off your alarm. And then once you're already out of the room, you're kind of like, oh, I know it's so much more effort to get back in bed and then get back out again. So I'm just gonna stay up. If you wanna wake up earlier, you have to go to bed earlier. Like you can't just expect to go to bed at 11 or 12 or one and then still wake up bright and early. You still need to prioritize getting a good night's sleep. Um, so I would say being an early morning person or a morning person in general, or waking up earlier definitely starts with going to bed earlier and that's like the only way around it um there's a really good book by matthew walker is it yeah matthew walker called why we sleep bear recommended it to me a couple of years ago when i was having really really bad sleep patterns um having that makes it sound like it was out of my control i was fully responsible for that i was creating really bad sleep patterns and I read that book and was just like, Phew, okay, I understand that this is like literally killing me. I'm going to prioritize sleep and now I go to bed really early every night and I love it. Between 8.30 and <laughs> 9.30. Ooh, can I sell lemonade? Please. What are your goals right now? I think learning... Le le <laughs> learning my boundaries and how to state them. <laughs> Thanks, Beth. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any boundaries you want to state? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> learning what my boundaries are and how to state them. It's probably a, a big goal that I'm trying to currently work on. Um. And then I would say a second goal is trying to better define or understand what my other goals are <laughs> in regards to career and finding a way that I can sustain myself and potentially my future family from a source of residual income, which I don't currently have. Um, yeah, I think a big misunderstanding about social media or influences is like if you have X amount of followers then you just automatically have a lot of money and that is definitely 
not always the case. And I love learning. I downloaded Masterclass the other day and it's amazing. I love it. I'm doing an interior design course currently and listening to Esther Perel at the same time with Bear. That's good. And doing my Pilates training and listening to a bunch of audiobooks and I just feel really inspired to continue learning so that I can understand. Yeah, like the more I know, the more I realize I don't know and that I have to learn, which is exciting. Okay, this is super unusual for me, but I've been exiled from the kitchen where Bear cleans up. Um, he's not in a recorded YouTube kind of mood and neither was I to be honest when we began but this is something that I promised and committed myself to doing one a week um, plus a, a yoga tutorial every week so two a week really how do you deal with body image and daily diet any advice on loving your body I think from the time that I was like young and started to understand food and the relationship between food and body image was, I guess it was popular at the time to like count calories. And even from a young age, I just intuitively felt that that was unhealthy. So I can, with all the confidence within myself, happily say that I have never counted calories or even understand. I don't even know how many calories I'm supposed to eat a day. <laughs> like I'm really naive about it, which I'm glad and I'm proud of because it meant that I was never like viewing my relationship with food as maths. Like I wasn't criticizing myself for eating X amount of calories or too much fat or carbs and I never demonized certain nutrition parts so like I never demonized fats or carbs or anything like that um, but in saying that I also am female and am not immune by any means to having you know certain periods or troubles or obstacles with body image myself especially being I guess recognized especially a long time ago, like going through puberty, I was called a prawn a lot, which you might be like, what? <laughs> what even is a prawn? A prawn is what we call a shrimp in Australia. So counterintuitive to the fact that people think that we put shrimp on the barbie, we do not. Um, we call them prawns. And a prawn, because I would get called a prawn because you keep the body and you throw away the head, right? Like you tear off the head and you eat the body. Um, so it was like a, a mean, childish, immature way of, of kids pretty much just saying that I had a butter face is another one I got called, as in an ugly face. She's pretty but her face, butter face. Um, or like, yeah. So I just kind of started to be known, I guess, for my body. And that really is definitely not the best or healthiest thing for a teenage girl, a maturing female body. Um, or the soul within the body and the mind within the body to be taught through external validation and the way that other people externally were relating to me and my body. Um, and that's how I was at the time unknowingly taught that that was what my worth was and then it was limited to my body. And so that has obviously, like very obviously had a huge impact and influence on my relationship to body image, self-love, self-compassion, forgiveness, um, diet to a certain extent, like I said, like limited in that capacity, but I, I struggle just as much <laughs> as I would say most women do. Um, that fluctuates, it comes and goes. I have periods of feeling really confident and, and comfortable within my body and other times when even if I don't like, I don't say or feel like I'm fat or anything like that because I know that I'm not. I just have days where I feel really uncomfortable within my body. Like I'm like, oh, so I just, I don't even feel like I'm supposed to be in this skin suit today. It doesn't feel like mine. I have that every now and then. Um, and I think it's just, it's an ongoing journey. It's a process and it's something that I'm, I'm grateful as a woman to be able to experience so that I can one, understand and empathize when other women are going through it or other people are going through it regardless of their gender or the way that they choose to, um, associate to themselves but 
yeah, like I think it's just a really human experience and regardless of what you look like, you're probably going to have those standards, higher standards of yourself than anyone else would have. Um, and that's a comforting thought to realize, right? That no one cares about what you look like because they're all so hyper-focused or fixated on what they look like. They're also concerned and worried about what they look like and what other people are thinking of them when no one's thinking about it because everyone's having that same thought process about themselves. Okay, so that's kind of it. Thank you for joining me. Let me know whether you enjoyed this style of vlog. Obviously it's new, I've never done something like that before. Um, yeah, let me know whether you enjoyed the more conversational style whilst cooking, um, whether you had any questions or other questions, feel free to put them in the comments and if there's suggestions about other styles of vlogs that you wanna see from me or themes or topics, I am super appreciative and grateful for that. And yeah, I would love it if you did that. I think it's it's really important um, for me so that I don't feel like I'm stagnating with creative ideas. I would love to know what you want so that I can just directly hit it on the head. Let's go check on dinner. It smells good. Okay, this was a fail. <laughs> this is still hot. <laughs> and that's where all the cheese is, so I can't just like put it the other way around, but the bottom ones are kind of soft. I'm pretty sure this is like legitimately the worst dinner I've ever made. Ever. <laughs> what is that? Wow. That's shocking. It's all right, I had the right intention. And good to know that these are not the kind of pasta sheets that you can cook like that. I need to pre-cook them in the future apparently. The most amazing vegan sriracha sauce ever. This stuff is life. And this is literally, literally. Like I don't, I genuinely don't think I could have made a worse dinner if I tried. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. In comparison to the last time I made it, big fail. Well, that was quite potentially the world's biggest fail. What did I learn? Don't cook while you're doing anything else. Because one, it takes the fun out of cooking. Two, I'm not good at multitasking. And three, you will end up with um, uncooked pasta. Yeah, that's my moral of the story. That, was, that is like quite literally the worst dinner I've ever made. <laughs> that was me like, come cook an amazing dinner with me. <laughs> no, <laughs> my ego's like, ow. <laughs> You just did that. Damn. Anyway, I'm gonna go and eat the remnants that I can of dinner and and then I'm gonna go shower and then I'm gonna go to bed. And then I'm halfway through my Pilates training. Um, I've got two more full days and a half day. And then all the like after course cert work and submission pieces and stuff like that. But exciting, you girls soon gonna be a Pilates bar instructor. And I love it. I love practicing it. And so far, so good with the course. I've been loving doing it. Um, and I'm really excited to start teaching. So we'll end on a high. <laughs> I will see you next week. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. I feel the need to do myself a better, to do myself justice. <laughs> because the other night's dinner was horrible and it was not something that I would normally cook. <laughs> For whatever reason, I'm self-conscious about the fact that I'm <laughs> sharing on the internet, which is so stupid, especially when you say it out loud, um, a horribly cooked dinner. It tasted delicious, mind you. I just, <laughs> I was like fully upset. <laughs> I was like, meh, I'm a terrible person because I'm a terrible cook. Um, which is clearly not the case on either part. I actually think that I'm a pretty good cook, which is why it was such a stroke to the ego. <laughs> um, so I'm cooking just like a regular vegan bolognese at the moment. And I was like, you know what? This is something that I would actually cook, you know, more frequently um, and is super easy to make. So simple, it's not even funny. So I thought I'd share it with you. So I started with the base of water, like a tiny little drizzle kind of thing in the bottom of the pan with chopped garlic and red onion which is what's currently in there and then i let that brown up a little bit added in some chopped mushrooms just some organic chopped mushrooms and some organic broccolini and organic carrots 
um, a tin of organic lentils, literally just like the tin stuff, um, and organic tomatoes. Um, and that's all that's currently in here, and I'll just mix that up. I did add in a little bit of um, tamari sauce as well, which is giving it that kind of like brown color. And when I say nutritional yeast, I don't just mean a little bit. I mean like, I like a lot of nutritional yeast. Like, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> Actually, that's not a lot for my kind of cooking because it is so yummy and really does make it like, it tastes cheesy. Ooh, camera's going foggy. Stuff's getting hot in the kitchen tonight. And then I'm also gonna use um, some mixed herbs and some adobo seasoning. So just like last time, I have no idea what adobo seasoning is, but this was here when we rented the house and it's apparently my new obsession. I love adding it to pretty much everything and this is all we've got left, so I need to go get some more. Just an organic bolognese chunky pasta sauce. Add that in. And then I'll start cooking the pasta. Bear's gone surfing again, um, so this will probably be ready when he gets home. Yummy. Added in a little bit of oregano and some mixed herbs. So added in some baby spinach and half of the spring onions. I always like to have spring onions on top as well. Wait for that to kind of like shrivel a little bit and then wilt and then mix it in. And then cook up some pasta. And here is our sauce whenever the pasta's ready. Delicious. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for pasta. It's a beautiful day. Yay. Yum. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-